Hello booktube, my name is Sarah and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with another author spotlight and this time we're talking about Susan Wiggs. Susan Wiggs is actually probably the very first author of contemporary romance that I ever read. Um, I know Kristen Hanna, or Kristen Higgins, excuse me, came in a very close second, but she was the first and she still remains an absolute favorite of mine. Um, there are four books here that I want to talk about um, that are among my absolute favorites of her, but I kind of wanted to get into where I discovered her. So I was at the bookstore and I wandered around and I happened upon um, this book called The Winter Lodge. And it is the second book by her in the um, Lakeshore Chronicle series. It's a really great story. Um, it was very light on, now she does tend to be light on the adult situations. Um, you don't get a lot of sex in her books. It is there. There are some scenes, but unlike Jill Shalvis, and I'm not knocking Jill Shalvis because I absolutely love her work, it's not scene after scene after scene. Um, it plays a part in the story, but it's not the big part of the story, if you know what I mean. So for someone who was just edging into contemporary romance, it was really, really nice and an, a, a nice way to get into these kind of books without being bombarded by, you know, sex scenes, essentially. Um, so yeah, so The Winter Lodge, I think it was the cover that drew me in, and I wish I had a picture of it in front of me, but I don't. Um, but I didn't know when I first started reading it that it was the second book in a series. And it wasn't until I wanted to look for more by her that I found out that it was actually a second in a series. So I ended up going back and reading the first book. And from there I was hooked. And I lent these books to my mom, to my friends, to co-workers. She is an amazing, amazing author. But like I said, there are four of her books that I want to talk about. So let's jump right in and get started. So the first one. Now, she writes both contemporary romance and historical romance. So the first book I'm going to talk about is a historical romance novel. And it's called The Hostage. It's the first book in the Great Chicago Fire Trilogy. And this was originally published in 2000. This is a 17-year-old book. Fantastic. Now... That's the more updated cover um, that I actually have it on ebook to reread. I have not read the other two books in this series. The next two are called The Mistress and the Firebrand. But the Chicago Fire is that, that um, for those of you who are unaware, it's if you guys are familiar with that, is it a folk song or some old little, about the cow knocking over the thing in the barn and starts the fire? That's the basis of the Chicago Fire. So essentially it's about these three friends, I think. Am I, am I remembering that correctly? Um, it's about three friends, and um, they kind of get separated during this great fire. She gets this first book. In this first book, she gets abducted um, because her father is very well-to-do. And so, hence the hostage. This is a fabulous, fabulous book. Great series. Susan Wiggs really, really does her, um, her research when it comes to um, historical romance. And the great thing, too, about these books is that most historical romance that you might be familiar with takes place in London, or in, in England, essentially, um, you know, in that location. But these, most of hers take place in America around the same time period. So that's really refreshing um, to read about a different, you know, what life was like in the colonies, if you will, during that same time period. Or not the colonies, but uh, America would have been independent, I think, by that point. But yeah. Absolutely love this book. If you like historical romance, give this one a try. So the next one I want to talk about um, is a book I've recommended to just about everybody. All these books I've recommended to just about everybody. And this is The Ocean Between Us. This book, sorry, the cover's kind of blowing it out, or the light's blowing it out, but there's the cover. This book is unbelievable. It is quite the departure from your typical um, contemporary romance. In it, the fact that the main characters are older. They actually have teenagers who are about to go off to college. Now, granted, they had their children when they were young, but that still puts them into their, you know, mid to late 40s, right? And it was just unlike anything that I had ever read before because I'd never read about people who were older than me, um, about a romance that was older than me. But because the romance is already established, like they've already had their meeting, that they've already had their marriage, they've already had their children, that this was quite a different take for me when I decided to read this. So essentially what the story is about, um, it's a husband and wife, and he is a, he's in the Navy. Um, and she has been a Navy wife since they met. And, you know, they've had three children, a set of twins who are on their way off to college, a boy and a girl, and then a younger daughter, um, who I think is in first or second year of high school. 
And, you know, of course, like any other kind of military family, they end up um, moving all the time. So she's constantly having to pick up everything and do. And she's kind of gotten to a point in her life where she doesn't want to do that anymore. She wants to settle down. But he's like, well, we're not going to buy a house. What if we have to leave again? So at the very beginning of the novel, there's this um, this kind of animosity towards each other. You know, they've been together for 20 years. And now, you know, they're not they're fighting all the time. And he heads off to sea to another mission that he's going to be gone like six months or whatever the case may be. And for the first time, they leave each other fighting. You know, it's not like they can't talk while he's on ship. Um, he's on an aircraft carrier. But it, it's different than being face to face, right? So anyway, at the very beginning of the book, something happens. And of course, I'm not going to get into what that something is. But something happens. And then the story goes from there. And it goes back in time. And you know, to back to present day and back and forth and back and forth, or not to present day, but to, to the events leading up to this event that took place. It's wonderful. It is absolutely an epic, wonderful love story. And I cried at the end. I've read it twice now. I read it the first time as a print book. I read it the second time as an audio book. And it was narrated by Joyce Bean, who does a lot of Susan Wake's books, and she's a fabulous narrator. And I did. I cried. I, I, it was so funny. I remember distinctly, um, I finished listening to this. I was on my way downtown for an appointment at the hospital for whatever reason. And I got into the parking lot at the hospital to park my car. And I actually sat there for five minutes to listen to the very tale and crying. Um, you know, that it's, it was amazing. I mean, not big, ugly tears, but you know, those, you know, that kind of, <laughs> the, that kind of crying. So good guys. Absolutely wonderful. Like I said, completely different take on the typical rom romance that you might be used to, but nonetheless, still fabulous. Um, the next one that, again, I have recommended to just about everybody is called Just Breathe. And this book was published in 2006, or no, 2008. Um, the Ocean Between Us was published in 2004, if you're curious. So this was published in 2008. I've read this, I've only read this once, but I think I, I do own it still on um, ebook, or I, I bought it again on ebook, and I do plan on getting to it eventually. Again, this book was wonderful. It's about a woman named Sarah, and she has literally just found out that her husband is cheating on her because she caught him. And she is pregnant. Um, so, of course, she picks up herself, like she picks up her, her whatever, her packs a bag, and she heads into their apartment in New York City and goes back to her hometown. Now, from what I remember, I think her mother passed away years earlier. Her father... I mean, he's her dad. It's a little different when you're going through something like that. You kind of want your mom. But she has these two very eclectic aunts, and they're fantastic. And they're kind of helping her through this struggle in her life, like the pregnancy and going through the divorce. And, of course, because this is a romance novel, she meets up with her old high school boyfriend. And the story goes from there. What makes this fun is that the aunts are hysterical. They're wonderful. Um, and she, Sarah, the main character, is actually a cartoonist. So every three or four chapters in this book, you get like a cartoon. And it's very much about a woman in her 20s living in, I think, New York. Or she's dealing with, infer in, not infidelity, infertility, I believe. If I remember incorrectly, I might be mixing these, uh, this book and something else up. I, I Don't quote me 100%. But there are these cartoons that kind of chronicle what she herself is going through. Um, it's poignant. It's sweet. It's a tearjerker. It'll make you laugh fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And it is a standalone novel, which is always nice, as is The Ocean Between Us. And the last book I want to talk about, I've talked about before, um, when I did my Beginner's Guide to Romance. I cannot re recommend the summer, um, summer at Willow Lake highly enough. This is the first book in the Lakeshore Chronicle series. The second book was the one I already mentioned, um, The Winter Lodge, which was the very first book by her I ever read. And then I went back and read this one. This book is just un- Believable. This is a this this is the epitome of a summer read, in my opinion. If you have not read Susan Wiggs and you want to get started on her, a pick this up because it's first in the series, and b pick it up because it's like April. You know, May is coming, the summer is coming. This is a perfect book to read while on vacation. So it's the story of Olivia and Connor. I've read this book now twice. The first time I read it in print book format. Second time on audio, also narrated by, by Joyce Bean. Fabulous. If you choose to listen to the audio, I highly recommend it. And like I said, story of Olivia and Connor. So Olivia and Connor have a history. 
and it is that they used to go to summer camp together when they were kids. Now, Olivia is from a very, very well-to-do family. The Bellamy's, they own the camp. And when I say camp, think the parent trap, you know, that kind of camp for kids. And her grandparents ran the camp, so obviously she got to go, but it was for very well-to-do kids. But they also took in kids, like, from the street. Street kids, if you, you want to call them that, like, do you guys know what I'm talking about? And Connor is one of those kids. Um, I think it's just him and his mom, if I remember correctly. So he's a few years older than her, I think. So they have this relationship when they're kids that they knew each other and they kind of didn't like each other and then they become friends. Well, following along with that storyline is also the storyline that's happening now. And now they're in their, their adults. I believe Connor's probably about 30 and Olivia's very close to 30. And it's her grandparents' 50th wedding anniversary. And um, she has been hired because she is a, she stages um, things, that's her job, you know, if you're going to sell your house, you have someone come in and, like, move your couch, and, you know, put a plant there, I'm making it sound very simplistic to what it actually is, but just so you guys get the idea, so she's being hired to revamp the camp, because the camp has been closed for years and years and years, so she, you know, is there to work on this, to, to bring the camp back up to, to standard, because the whole family's coming for this 50th wedding anniversary, and, um, she hires or her family hires a contractor. She doesn't know who it is. It's Connor. So their relationship starts back up again now as adults. And she remembers him, but he doesn't remember her because it's the uh, whole ugly duckling into the swan scenario. It is wonderful. The back and forth between when they were kids to now is amazing. Um, there's also the secondary story of her parents, Olivia's dad and, you know, a kind of slightly scandalous relationship he had before Olivia was even born. These stories are so rooted in family. Um, it's wonderful. Now, they can be read, read standalone. Like if you, like I read um, The Winter Lodge first and then went back and read this one and it really didn't ruin anything for me. Um, but going forward to read them in order is the way I do recommend them because not only is this story itself great with Connor and Olivia, but there's an overall story arc that starts in this book and carries all the way through to book number eight in this series. I think it's book, book eight or nine. And there's a character in here, and I think I talked about this again in my Beginner's Guide to Romance video. There's a character you meet in this book, and she's only 13 years old, and her parents are getting divorced, and her name is Daisy. And your heart breaks for Daisy because she's trying to just get noticed. In the middle of this divorce, you know, she just, she's acting out. She's smoking. She's smoking pot. She's uh, sneaking out. She's hanging out with boys that she shouldn't be. You know what I mean? And she's a scared little girl and, and your heart breaks for her. At the same time, you want to shake her and go snap out of it. But as the series progresses, you watch Daisy grow up and stuff happens to Daisy. And I don't want to talk about the stuff that happens to Daisy because I don't want to ruin anything for anybody. But then finally you get to book eight or nine in the series and it's finally Daisy's, Daisy's story. Daisy's now an adult and she's now going to get her story and you've seen her struggle and it's just amazing. And I know that um, as when I read The Winter Lodge, it had just been released. And then I went back and read this one, like I said. But then after that, I went out and every time a new book was released, I was reading it. And at the time, I would get on forums online and people would be asking, where's Daisy's story? Where's Daisy's story? The whole community of fans of Susan Wiggs were following these and wanting to know not only like how great the series was and they were loving all the books coming out, but where was Daisy's story? because everybody fell in love with her, and it was amazing, and I absolutely loved it. So, yeah. Again, I cannot recommend Susan Wiggs enough. She's an amazing contemporary romance author um, and a historical romance author. Not as much on the historical side as she does on the contemporary side, but they're still great. Um, so, yeah, highly recommend. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, please let me know in the comments below if you have read any Susan Wiggs books. Who, What was your favorite? Um... Some of them I haven't gotten to. Some of the newer ones I haven't had a chance to get to yet, um, but I am definitely looking forward to them. I've got, like, the Beekeeper's Ball, I think, is one of the new one, uh, newer ones, and the Family Quilt I've got as well, so I'm looking forward to those too. But anyway, again, if you've read her, let me know below which is your favorite, and if you haven't read her yet, let me know any of the ones that I talked about, which one sounds like one that you might start with. <laughs> but anyway, guys, that is it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see you in my next one. Take care and happy reading, everybody. Bye.